Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Darling, what time is it? Just five minutes later than it was when you asked me five minutes ago. What time was it five minutes ago? 8.30 o'clock. That sounds funny, 8.30 o'clock. 8 o'clock sounds all right. I wonder why 8.30 (laughs) o'clock... David, why do you want to know the time? Because I want to call Mr. Jared Tucker as early as possible. Still not too early. Oh, you're going to call him in Eastbrook? Where else? Nowhere, I guess. Eastbrook is where he is. Do you think 8.35 is too early to call him? Pretty early. Have another cup of coffee and then see what you think. I've got coffee, thanks. Come on, here, have a little more. Warm it up. That's enough. Claudia, that's enough. Oh, look what you've done. What? You filled the cup too full. Now I've got to go to the coffee instead of the coffee to me. (laughs) You've got fine manners. I think he should be up by 8.30. 8.40. I think he's been up for hours. You do? I do. After all, he's a farmer, isn't he? What about the cows? He's probably been milking them for hours. It doesn't take hours to milk a cow. It doesn't? Then why start so early? Because early is when the cows like to be milked. Imagine willingly becoming a slave to a cow. Personally, I think cows are spoiled. They always have their way. They're just taking after their sex. What sex? Cows are ladies, darling. How many times do I have to tell you? I know they're ladies. What do you think I thought they were? I wouldn't know. Of course, everybody knows that cows are... Anyways, I was saying, I don't know why anyone has cows unless they have to. You've got to have them if you have a farm. Why? Because it isn't a farm without cows. Good, then let's not have a farm. Let's just have a house in the country. If we have to have something. You're cute. You always say I'm cute when I say something you don't think I mean. You're smart, too. Huh. Darling, you have to stop kidding me sooner or later. What do you mean? For days now, you've been pretending that you don't want the farm just because you don't want me to worry that you'll be terribly disappointed if we don't get it. That's it, isn't it? No, David, it isn't. (laughs) See? That's exactly what I mean. You just won't admit it. You just won't believe the truth when you hear it. Because I know the truth when I hear it. When you raved about the house, got excited about the old beams and latches and floors, then I knew. You couldn't pretend all that, darling. Couldn't I? I know you too well. You don't know me at all. David, where are you going? To the telephone. I'm going to call Tucker this minute and tell him our bid's gone up. Just because we decided last night with Roger that 2,000 more might do it doesn't mean it will, does it? No, but I'm going to offer it to Tucker and see what happens. Mm. Hello? Operator, give me Eastbrook 264, ring 3. As my number is Plaza 55597. Yes, operator, I'll hold on. I need something to hold on to, too. Yes, operator, ring three. Ring three. That's a party line. How do you know about party lines? I read about them in a book. Oh, David, I think I'd love to live on a party line. You're the kind of person who would be forbidden to live on a party line. Oh, don't be stuffy. Everybody listens on a party line. That's what they're for. Think how well you get to know your neighbors without having to talk to them. Hello? Hello? Is he there? Bringing him now. Cross your fingers, Doc. They're cross. They look like table mats. And knock wood. My knees are knocking. Will that do? Fine. Well, where is he? Why doesn't he answer? Hello? Hello, Mr. Tucker? Yes, good morning. This is David Norton. Uh, the weather here in New York? Not too good. The weather, the weather. What's that got to do with anything? David, he's crazy. Crazy like a fox. Oh, of course I received my letter back. That's why I'm calling. Well, I was very disappointed, Mr. Tucker. David, don't you think you ought to play hard to get? Shh. Yes, I, I don't mind telling you that I thought you'd accept my offer. 
Well, I realize that you're not anxious to sell the place. Tell him but... that I'm not anxious to buy it. But even so, I thought it was a good price. The house needs a lot of repair. All it needs is a new house. Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't mean to say you haven't kept it up well, but... But, Mr. Tucker... Well, yeah, but I, I don't see whether that, that has to do with the price of eggs. Eggs? What eggs? I mean with the price I'm willing to pay you. With his attitude, I wouldn't give him one extra cent. Now, look, Mr. Tucker, I, I've been thinking this matter over carefully. There must be a price which will be satisfactory to both of us. Now, my wife and I have decided that... Now, can't tell you so good. These phones ain't working out as well as they're supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yes, I heard that. You're offering me $2,000 more. Yep, I get you. That makes it 12 in all. No, no, I'm not saying that'll do. Dad Tucker, you stop bargaining with that young man. He's offering you plenty for that house. You don't need no more. Now, Delilah, this is business. You're just a woman. You stay out of it. Talking to my sister, Mr. Norton. Women always got to put their two cents in. <laughs> Twelve thousand, eh? Twelve thousand dollars will do you, Jan Tucker, till you die in day. You ain't got so much time left. If I was you and I was offered it, I'd take it. Delilah, I got a heap more living to do, and I aim to do it well. Now hush up, or I won't be selling the house tall, 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 You'll tall. You'll sell it. Not because you want to, but because you like to make a bargain. Why do women talk so much? Uh, look here, Mr., uh, Mr., Mr. Norton. This uh, phone conversation is costing you too much. Jalal here seems to think it uh, can go on forever. Now I'll hang up and start figuring about whether I can manage to give it to you. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Tucker. No, no, don't hang up. Really, I, I don't mind how long this takes. I'd like to arrive at a decision as soon as possible. David, what is going on? Why doesn't he say yes or no? He's thinking about it. Oh, I don't know what there's so much to think about. Just a minute, Mr. Tucker. If we want to buy that old place, you'd think he'd sell it. A broken-down house, no plumbing. Now, look, Mr. Tucker... What seems to be the trouble? Is it too much or is it too little? Oh, this makes me so angry. I've half a mind to want to buy the place Shh, now. Shh, darling, I can't hear a word he's saying. Uh, you think that's not enough, eh? Not enough! Well, uh, I want you to... Yes. Yes, well, I, I want you to tell me how you feel about my new offer. Yes, it's $12,000. $12,000, eh? $12,000. Eh? $12, well, the place has been in the family for 103 years. 103 years' work has gone into each acre of that land. You're getting the sum total of it, best farmlands thereabouts, yeah? Talk about a woman talking. Your tongue's as loose as crab apple jelly that ain't set. I'll tell you, son, $12,000 ain't enough. For what ain't it enough? For the whole thing. But uh, maybe I can whittle it down a bit around the edge. Now the, uh, the uh, well, the south boundary, for instance. Give it to him, far as the road. That's what it's always been. Well, it goes as far as the road, but uh, I think that's my too far. Pull that boundary back a little. Say, uh, well, say up to the lower pasture land. That's too far, Jared Tucker. Uh, my sister said it's not far enough. Well, pull it up to the second field. I'll need the lower pasture myself come next summer. Are you willing, son? If he's willing. It'll be a fine proof that you won't be going to heaven, Jared Tucker. I've half a mind not to let you come live in my house with me. Much as you are my responsibility for being old. Second field, David, I don't think it's quite fair not to have all the land of the road, do you? You really hate to let any of it go, don't you? It's the principle of the thing. Oh, hold on a minute, Mr. Tucker. Yes, I, I know this is costing money. It's costing you acres, too. But, darling, wouldn't you rather have some of it than none of it? I'd rather fight for it all, wouldn't you? I don't think it'll do any good. Hello, Mr. Tucker. Yes, I understand your position, of David, course. don't give in to him. Well, what about the north boundary? It's supposed to be the brook. David, don't give up the brook. It babbles. Mr. Tucker, I don't think I can give up the brook. No, you see, my wife babbles. What? Uh, 500 feet in from the brook? David, hold the line a second. Just one moment, Mr. Tucker. Darling, listen. Would you give him the lower pasture for the brook? Mm, we'll have the meadow on the hill. I don't suppose we'll need more. Sure, why not? Oh, wonderful. I love a brook. It's worth the whole place. Uh, Mr. Tucker, I'll trade you the lower pasture for the brook. How's that? Nope, I, I won't give up both of them. It's a deal? David, will he? Yes, he will. That makes 76 acres now. Uh, Mr. Tucker, we've settled these south and north boundaries. 
The west one is the road, and the east one is the stone wall at the far bottom of the hill. Are you satisfied? I, uh, I don't see how I can give you the far slope of the hill. Nope. I think I, I think, uh, I think that, uh, that from the crest of the hill down the slope to the other side, I'll have to keep his moan. What are you aiming to do? Pick up them newfangled sleds that fit onto feet? He ain't ever going to be using the far side anyway. Are you, Jared Tucker? I'm ashamed to call your brother. I'm doing business, Carla. It ain't nothing personal. The boy understands that. Business is business, and this is the way it's done. He's doing the same in business. You give as little for as much as you can get. Now, uh, son, there's a walnut tree atop the hill, you recall. Yep. Well, I aim to keep all the land from it on, and including it, of course. Now, uh, that's the last point. we got to come to a... The walnut tree, eh? If I give you the walnut tree and that far slope, the place is ours. Well, how many acres will that make it? About 72, eh? David, I love that walnut tree. I love the whole blasted place, and he knows it. What about the walnut tree? I guess I don't particularly like walnuts. Uh, yes, Mr. Tucker, yes. He's saying that's the easiest way to limit the property. Property. Use a tree as a marker. With a marker on his side, of course. Darling, what do you think? What do you think? He's waiting. Can't we bargain? Oh, I hate to give up with bargaining. The bargaining's the best part. Yes, Mr. Tucker, I'm still here. I, I, I know this call is costing money. How about giving him the walnut tree if we can have ha- half the lower pasture? Darling, you're wonderful. I didn't know you were as much in love with that lower pasture as I am. Mr. Tucker, how about... What's that? Oh, it's the walnut tree in the lower pasture or else. Oh, all right. But I'll find a way to get it back. Right, Mr. Tucker. The tree is yours with our love. So that adds up to 71 acres for $12,000 instead of 80 acres for $10,000. We're certainly a wonderful pair of businessmen. I think it's all set. Yes? Yes, agreed. 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 What's your answer, Mr. Tucker? Of course I'm paying for this you call. Yes, David. What? He won't give it to me now. Oh, can't you? I see you want to talk it over with your sister. Well, that's very understandable. Yes. Yes, and I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye, Mr. Tucker. Oh, oh, but say it. Hello. Hello. He hung up. He wouldn't say yes? He wouldn't say no. Is it a good sign? I wouldn't know that either. Well, now you can see how stubborn the men were who built this country. I'm furious. If I'd known, I'd have bargained a lot harder. I'm starting to think you like the bargaining part better than the house. The house? David! I've been having such a wonderful time bargaining, I forgot all about the house. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you can't make up your mind between fish or chicken, when the bakery is all out of chocolate eclairs and you have to revise tonight's menu pronto, why not stop at that familiar red cooler and have an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola? Shop refreshed, and you'll do a better job of it. Now that restrictions are lifted, you'll find Coke around the corner from almost anywhere, so you can enjoy the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes... (laughs) 